Hey guys, so I wanted to show Rexar, and I'm going to tell you guys right now, I am not the best Rexar player out there. Uh, I was very rusty, I haven't played Rexar in probably about four or five months. Um, but I've coached a lot of people on Rexar and kind of explained what the playstyle is so you can almost become uncounterable on the maps where you have to hold a point. That's Brax's Holdout and Dragonshire. And this video, I just wanted to kind of show a little bit about this playstyle and how you're supposed to run with it. Yes, these team comps are a little unusual, but surprisingly, this is a ranked game. Uh, this is high diamond masters, all the players in here, diamond or masters, um, with, I think, uh, they may have a grandmaster on their team. I can't remember, but overall, I mean, this is the games you're going to be seeing. So... Uh, with that being said, I wanted to show you guys a little bit about how Rexar plays, what are the things that you should be focusing on, and how you can become an uncounterable force on those per two particular maps. Now, there are a lot of people that can hold their own against Rexar and pretty much be really, really annoying. In fact, one of the favorites that I've heard is actually just throw Uther in the solo lane, as Uther can auto-attack the bear, gain his mana back, and then heal more than Rexar or the bear can even do as far as damage goes, which I thought was is pretty interesting because then when you get to team fights, Uther is a little bit better in team fights than Rexar is, which is cool. Uh, people have come up with a lot of creative ones, but I've never seen one that can solve the the major problem. Um, and I will show you guys what the major problem is when I zoom out for just a second. Um, but uh, this this uh, on these maps in particular, it's surprisingly difficult to deal with something uh, that I pretty much just am going to describe as being in two places at once. So what essentially is going to happen is that there is going to be waves, and I'm just going to put the waves as white um, right here, okay? Uh, then we need to be on the point, which is going to be, let me just make that black, uh, which is up here. So what's going to happen is that Rexar, and I'll put Rexar as blue, let's go light blue, can be in two places at once, can have Misha hold the point while also pushing the lane at the same time. And this is going to make everyone have a decision to make. If you can beat Misha, it depends on how fast it takes you or, or how long it takes you, how fast you can kill Misha while Misha is getting healed and while Misha, a good Rexar player, is going to be kiting around the circle healing Misha while they're also going to be pushing this wave out. On average, some of the fastest people to kill Misha are going to be kited, which means that Misha will be running out, and then when you start holding the point, Misha's going to run in, and the second that you grab the point back, Misha's going to hold the point again, and it's going to be this never-ending battle where you can never hold the point for longer than a couple seconds. And if you're going to fight on the point for a while, then you're going to fight while Rexar has control of the point. While all of this is going on, Rexar only takes two cues to wipe the wave down here, meaning it takes Rexar about seven seconds to cost you soak. So every time a wave shows up, you have about seven seconds. I think it's nine, actually. Nine seconds before you're going to start losing soak. Can you defeat the bear in under nine seconds? And can you hold the point long enough to where your team gets the objective in under that amount of time? And that's why Rexar is essentially uncounterable, because the only people that can kind of contest is like Imperius, who Imperius can do enough damage to uh, Misha to scare her away, and then Imperius can use his Q to jump back into the lane and still catch the soak. And then once he catches the soak, he can then jump back up and start fighting Misha again. Uh, that's one of the few people who can do it. And even then, it's really pushing it. Because you'll be able to scare off Misha, Misha will walk away, and then when you jump back down, Misha's just going to take back the point again, and Rex are still going to be pushing the, the uh, experience. So, I talked to a couple pro players about this, and um, essentially they came up with the, the strategy of, they said, well, in coordinated it's less of an issue because we can send people up to that lane and gank Rexar. So, while they're fighting over the point up top, we just send someone in to quickly kill Rexar, and then suddenly we're okay. He says, but unfortunately in non-competitive play, 
a good Rexar is literally uncounterable. And we had a discussion between about four or five pro players that were in HCC and all that, and they just pretty much said, yeah, it's uncounterable. It's one of the few heroes that's uncounterable. So if we're going against someone who likes playing a lot of Rexar, when we get Deshire or Braxis, we just ban him because it's just not worth worrying about dealing with that. He goes, or we'll try to play someone who can rotate. He goes, Genji was our old way to answer it in Braxis before all of the nerfs. So it's just interesting. So imagine in this game, you're watching a better Rexar player than myself, um, <laughs> and then we can kind of go from there. So I am going against a Butcher. Butcher's idea, his his strategy to win this game is going to charge Rexar um, as many times as he can. That's ultimately going to be Butcher's goal here, is to charge Rexar. As far as Rexar, my goal here is to pretty much just soak experience, and he is zoning me out of a little bit of experience here, but I am controlling the point, so I don't need to worry about him winning the game. Um, but right here, I can freeze the lane if I want to, or I could just push. Because I want to be denying him experience, I'm just going to push. Now you can see I just moved Misha away, and then I'm just going to push this lane out. That's one Q, and he just mounted up, so I'm going to send Misha back onto the point, and I'm going to wait until he claims it and starts walking away. When he claims it and starts walking away, I'm going to walk away, and now he's going to be dealing with the point. He only got the point long enough that someone could start channeling, but they wouldn't be able to actually get a dragon. So once again, after I control the point, I'm going to grab a fountain, and I'm going to leave Misha up there. Now, a good Rexar doesn't need to leave Misha up there. A good Rexar can bring Misha back down, and then you can wipe the wave even faster by using a Q and a W right through the wave, and then send Misha back up to contest the point. And so you don't need to... And, and the other part about leaving Misha closer to you is against someone like a... a a butcher you can immediately stun the butcher when he walks in so i'm just gonna use my q i'm gonna walk into turret range get him taking a little bit more damage than i take and i'm gonna walk back misha this entire time is gonna endlessly hold top so despite the fact that my team is getting wrecked down in the bottom lane um we are perfectly fine we're not losing an objective i brought misha down just to grab the experience that i was missing because he's trying to zone me out of experience he's playing that out really well to be completely honest um now i send misha in to grab the globe so i can because i am stacking globes now I'm going to use just my basics to get up there. I send Misha back up, and again, that was kind of a mistake. I walk back in. I need to get this experience, so I send Misha in. I grab the experience. I W in to grab the globe, and I'm only ever risking Misha, but I'm also not putting Misha in a position where she's going to die and I'm going to give uh, any sort of meat to Butcher. I want to make sure that I'm winning the objective all the time. I don't want to be losing the objective ever. Despite the fact that we're down three kills, not only are we equal on experience, but they haven't won the uh, the objective yet. And the few times that they have had it, um, and again, I walk Misha away, I start pushing, and now I can send Misha back in to contest the point so that they don't get it. And if I want, I can start putting or, or kiting Misha around, which normally, again, a better Rexar would be kiting Misha right now. Um, but instead, I just sat and auto-attacked him. I contested the points so that he couldn't win the objective and look at how much experience he would lose if he continued to try to stay and contest. Now, he has to make that choice that I was talking about. Lose experience or hold point. Uh, or gain experience and lose point. You just are going to lose one or the other. So now they bring two people to my lane. At the point that you start getting two people to your lane is when you know you're really winning as Rexar. Because suddenly, the enemies have to now... They have to fight down someone almost the entire time. So it's going to be a lot easier for us to end up winning this with two people. We can send extra people to lanes if we need to. We can send an extra person up top. We can send more people down bot. We can steal enemy camps if we want to. Now we have the true power to do whatever we want to with this game, which just makes it really, really great. Um, but yeah, Rexar is, is insane. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the Rexar build that I like and why I like this build. So level one, I go Bird of Prey. Two Qs wipes a wave. And since two Qs wipes a wave, it's very easy to get the, uh, do you see how much damage the Qs do? Half of the front line's health and then more than half of the back line's health. It's, it's just awesome. It's so much damage. Um, I love this talent for this type of map where all you have to do is, uh, and I, I grabbed the globe really quick. Um, and it, it's just so great. Now, Butcher's also out of mana here, so this is great. I control top and I'm also, I can zone experience if I want to, so I'm zoning experience. I'm just letting the minions die. Uh, but if he's going to back, and if I think he's going to back, I'm going to use Q. I see him go mid, so then I'm like, wait, he's mid. I'm going to push out this lane. Um, 
but I didn't, I didn't realize he was mid for a little while. Then when I realized he's mid, I'm like, okay, I'm going to bring Misha down, and we're just going to push out this lane really quick, deny him some experience. Level 7, I like to go Hunter-Gatherer, primarily for the 15 armor. 15 armor is really valuable because it increases your effective health by 15%, and you don't put a target on your back, which I never want a target to be put on my back. Uh, when he puts a he or the heal thing on Misha, I usually walk Misha away so he doesn't get free heals. In that case, I was a little slow on it, but that's okay. We did get the first dragon of the game. So despite being down three kills and really struggling in the early game, I held the objective for the entire game. And, um, well, I mean, not the entire game, but that entire thing, even though we got behind, even though stuff happened, I held the objective. I go back up to top lane to get some extra soak for my team, try to get level 10s. I love Hunter Gather because it increases your health region to the point where Misha can deal with almost anything. Uh, you can heal almost through anything, and you also get that extra 15 armor. So it's just really, really nice. I just really like that talent. This puts a target on your back. You never want a target on your back as, as Rexar. It's just not worth it. Hungry Bear is okay in some situations where you need to like 1v1 someone forever, and they're going to be focusing on your bear and not you, or if you want to like solo a boss or something weird. I usually just save stun to immediately stun him after he attacks me, and then I just need to walk away on whatever he puts the mark on. So again, he's healing a lot off of Misha. A better Rexar would have walked Misha away faster, and then would have attacked him. At this level, you can take two talents. If you need more CC, I recommend going Aspect of the Beast, but we're actually running a lot of CC, and I didn't want the overlap, so instead I go with Taking Flight. I like Taking Flight um, because, and, and again, like I, just, I took out... Uh, butcher right there. I did use my Unleash the Boars so that I could slow him down so we were, we made a forced fight and then I stunned him before he could get any heals off. Um, but yeah, so I like taking flight for one major reason post level 13, but it also increases your range and it refunds mana and lowers your cooldown. Uh, so you can use your Q more often if you're fighting enemies that are fighting in the wave. Um, but I primarily take this talent if I feel like we're going to need damage in the late game because of the level 13 I like to take. Level 10, I take Unleash the Boars every single game. And my reasoning for this is because I want Misha to just be more of a bait. Uh, and I want Misha to check bushes for us so like we don't immediately lose the fight. And if you're going to notice something, you're going to notice that my builds don't rely on Misha at all. Uh, I use Misha purely for utility purposes only. My build is going to do a lot of damage without Misha, and I want it to be that way. I don't want to ever have to worry about Misha being a liability. I don't want my build to turn off. So you're not going to see me taking a lot of Misha talents because... I use Misha to check bushes for us so we don't die. I use Misha to uh, just hold points for me. I don't ever use her for actual what that is. Level 13, I take Aspect of the Hawk. When you hit someone with your, your Hawk, you will do 125% increased attack speed, or you're going to have increased attack speed. Uh, and then Misha's basic attacks increase the duration of the buff, which means that you're going to be increasing your DPS by 100%, give or take, because we're also including Misha's damage in there, your Ws, all that. Uh, but it adds a lot of DPS as far as auto attacks go. You turn into a mini Zul'jin. Um, and to have a bear and then also a mini Zul'jin is huge. So in a case like this, right as the healing thing ends, I could use my Q on him and do a lot of damage. But again, better Rexar versus me. Better Rexar probably would have stunned him, used Q, done a bunch of DPS. Um, and, and that's just where that comes in. I'm playing safe. I want to stay close enough to where I'm in the... I'm, I'm not leashing Misha, because you see that Misha just leashed there. But I also want to get to a position where I can uh, clear the lane. So right here, I'm like, I think I can fight this guy now that I'm 13. So I missed my Q, unfortunately. Um, so I just walk away. If I would have landed my Q, I would have tried to fight him. In this case, I'm just going to have Misha kite around. So you can see, I start kiting. He realizes what's going on. He's like, I'm never going to take this point back. Now, we just won another Dragon Knight. I'm going to start walking my way up, bringing Misha down so that Misha can stun and I can continue walking through. I use my Q to slow, and look at this attack speed. I mean, I need a stutter step, but so much attack speed. If I didn't want to fight that, I could have used Q and just walked away while he was slowed from the Q, and I would have been okay. But with ETC showing up, I knew I could fight. That's two DKs in our favor, and now we're even on kills. Um, so we're in a really good spot. I am going to try to take out this fort just a little bit so I could push a little further when I want to deny enemies experience. Um, and I just want to get more value out of our objectives. 
So you can see right now we're at the point where it's just 1Q1W wipes the wave. So you're going to see me start doing that a little bit more often, and I can start double soaking really easily, and just do QW, QW, and wipe wave after wave. In this case, I wanted to play a little bit more aggressive. I was going to wipe the next wave of experience because you can see it appears right here. So I wanted to go through and use one Q right down the wave and then have Misha just W through the entire thing. But with Cassia showing up, I realized that I needed to adjust that. So I use a Q and I just start auto attacking her. Look at this DPS that I'm doing right now. It's pretty great. Um, I you do an ult thinking that maybe I can slow her down, get a kill. Uh, it's a very low cooldown, so I just kind of use it whenever I have it. 1Q, 1W, uh, if I repositioned better, I would have been able to kill it. And that is it. Now right here, I believe I end up dying unless someone... Oh, we've got a, an arrow coming in. I mean, this is just a lot of stuff going on. So I'm pretty sure I die here. Uh, I do use my attack speed, take out Cassia, um, but that is my first death. But with that being said... Um, we didn't have an objective up, so it wasn't a big deal, but that was probably my biggest macro mistake, is I just stayed top so long when I should have just walked away. Um, I do end up taking Fain Death. Now, I like all of these talents, to be completely honest. Thrill of the Hunt allows you to really chase down people with your Q, especially if you took this talent, because you're just slowing people, attack speeds increase, movement speeds increase, you just charge after him, take him out. Um, however, against a Butcher, I really like Fane Death, because if he can charge you, uh, he's unstoppable during charge, and he's going to stun you, and then while that stun is ending, you're going to get hit by the ult, and you're going to die before that ult ends. So if I can Fane Death right before he hits me, then he's going to charge close to my team, but he won't land the stun, and he'll die. And so that's why I really like Fane Death against Butcher, I like it against Pyroblast, I like it against Divers, stuff like that. I do like Primal Intimidation, I do like Thrill of the Hunt though, I think all of these talents are very good. Um, again, a lot of people recommend Dire Beast, it is pretty bursty, uh, I just really don't like relying on Misha too much just because she has low health. And she just generally is a liability, especially when you use her to check bushes for your team. Um, because there's a good chance if I checked that bush and it was like a Diablo and a Butcher, she just dies instantly and gives meat to Butcher. So I didn't really want to deal with that. Uh, I, I don't ever want to have like a downtime where I'm a useless hero waiting for Misha. So my build is very Rexar oriented. I see my team fighting, and this is my favorite. This is the main reason why I always take Unleash the Boars. This is my favorite type of thing to do with Rexar. You don't just dominate the solo. You should also be able to flank and, and have a huge impact on the game. Right here, I'm going to be using an Unleash the Boars that's going to hit everyone on their team. Okay, And because of that, we're going to be slowing everyone on their team by 40% while also doing 214 damage. And it's a great way to immediately turn a fight to be favorable. So we're going to slow everyone on their team. And it's going to be easy for our team to just walk in and hit whoever we want to. I followed up one stun with another stun. Use my Q. I'm going to walk Misha away so he stops getting healing. And suddenly, he has no healing. So he gets taken out. And then I can bring Misha back into the fight. Everyone was slowed long enough. We were able to just kill one after the next after the next. And now I can go right up to top lane and I can start working on the uh, the objective. I do see another wave showing up here so I want to just wipe through the wave really quick. I'm sending you see that I targeted uh, Misha in and I just wanted to clear up these. I already have my globe stack so and I'm full health full mana so I didn't really worry too much about the globes there. I want to make sure that I still get this objective at a reasonable time but I also wanted to get that soak for my team and start applying a little bit more pressure. As we start approaching level 20, I personally like Kill Command as a root, a 1.5 second root hitting everyone is insanely strong. But Frenzy of Kalimdor is also okay if you just need that DPS. Hardened Skin is also okay. Um, but I personally go Kill Command almost every time because I like holding the lane, holding the point, and then right as I realize that I'm holding the point, the enemies are, are or, or if I kill like my enemy laner, I'm like, alright, I'm going to go flank. And I love this flank because you can just immediately flank their whole team, slow their whole team, do damage to their whole team, and then follow up with whatever you need. So right here, we're just waiting for our ETC to show up before we push in a little bit. Um, something that coordinated teams can do a little bit easier than non-coordinated teams. Uh, but for the most part, I, I think I'm grouped with only a couple people, so it's not like we're fully planning this out or anything. 
Um, as far as that goes, I mean, you can just see the attack speed that I have. We're able to really drop down uh, Diablo pretty quickly. I didn't do it by myself, but I certainly helped. And uh, it's, I mean, it's relatively easy. You get that extra attack speed and you can melt through so much stuff. I could send uh, Misha to tank for walls or anything, but instead, just watch. Q, W, whole wave's dead. Um, again, a better XR would position better, but you know what I mean. Uh, so now I can push. We have an extra wave in case we want to push, but the DK is about to end, so it's not a big deal. And when you do have a Rexar, in a, um, you can pretty much... If you're on a map like this, you can just win with just the objective. You don't need to do anything crazy. Uh, you, you don't need to try to force the, the game ending soon because you scale just about as well as other heroes do. I would say you're relatively average uh, at, at any point in the game. A little bit lower damage than most heroes, but at the same time, that's kind of irrelevant. It's right here, fast attack speed. I don't use Feign Death here, primarily because I, I could dodge the, the APOC, but I could also just walk out of the APOC and then just use that increased attack speed that I have. Uh, I dodge one, and then I just do Feign Death here because I know she was going to focus on me until I died, and the Butcher was already dead, so I didn't need to worry about Feign Deathing anything that the Butcher does, and we can focus on her. At this point, I can just bring Misha back and heal Misha and walk away and we're good to go. I do play Misha safer for playing a build that doesn't really need Misha, um, but still, it's, it's just something that I recommend because at the point people see that you're taking like the uh, like Easy Prey into Hungry Bear, into Aspect of the Beast, into Bestial Wrath, into Dire Beast, all they're going to do is just kill Misha and then you're done. Um, so that's why I always like this build instead, because if they focus on me, I feign death. If they focus on Misha, then I still am a strong hero. I'm just a mini Zul'jin at that point. And your auto attacks are relatively scary. I mean, you do 285 damage with an auto attack, and with that extra attack speed, you're attacking like twice per second. So that's like 500 DPS with just Rexar. It's not bad at all. Uh, that's not including the damage that's going to be added from Swift Swoop, from the damage of doing Unleash the Boars, uh, maybe a Misha Charge here or there, or Misha's auto attacks. All in all, you can do like 800 DPS at level 20. Um, probably close to that at level 16 if you're if you're playing really well. And then we also have that 15 armor, so we're hard to deal with. I do go for a camp here. Ultimately, this was a mistake on my part. I didn't think that we were going to be able to take this camp so quickly and just push with it. I thought we were going to need to apply a little bit more pressure. So I go with this instead and decide to uh, I decide to, to get that camp to be a bit of a distraction. I head up. I grab the top objective so we can go with the boss. But we actually probably could have ended the game. We were... We had level 20s on the enemies. We had a camp pushing that would give us all spell armor. Uh, just overall, it was a really good pick. I'm sending Misha forward just so I can stun in case he comes in. And then again, I reset Misha back to my position again. Um, there's actually a lot going on when you're playing Rexar. When I play Rexar, I move Misha around a lot that you don't really see in the replay. You don't see exactly where I'm sending Misha all the time, but... Um, there are a lot of commands. When I want to keep her with myself so she doesn't take unnecessary damage, when I decide to send her in, I did do an ult there so I, I can slow, and in this case, root uh, the KT, and that, that forces them to use an ult that's a longer cooldown than mine. That forces them to waste a bunch of stuff. I mean, overall, it's just really, really valuable. And now that they're down with Ancestral, they pretty much just have to use everything to try to stay alive. Uh, we don't end up ending the game here, which is kind of surprising to me. I focused on the core. Uh, when you get, I, I usually try to feign death when he gets closer, but in this case, I just feign death immediately. Started attacking him. He's healing off of me, so there's no point in me auto attacking him. I just walk away, use my Q to slow, and then I heal my bear and I go in and I start auto attacking. One Q increases my attack speed, allows me to just just start swinging. When I'm blinded, I walk away. I use my W to then stun her, and I continue just walking away. I'm not going to be healing, but I mean, look at this health regen, though. Uh, currently, I'm regening at 33 health per second. If I click on, like, uh, Cassia, for example, she regens at 8 health per second. So that's one of the things, like, I have such a higher amount of regen than she does. Almost, what, four times as much regen? Um, and that's huge. That's honestly huge. So, or three, three times. 8 times 3 is uh, 24, so 4 times, yeah, 4 times as much regen as her. Um, 
Now, she did end up killing me. She had way more movement speed than I was expecting, and I had, like, no health. But um, that's why I love that talent. I mean, Hunter Gatherer is certainly good if you just don't get killed, but sometimes it just happens. People just focus you. And that's why I don't like having to worry about that, is I, I just don't even want to deal with it. We're going to fast forward through my death, and we'll continue going on. So, so far, this Cassia has, has beat me once on my own fault, once on, I would say, her dying to kill me um which is i mean taking trades when you're behind in levels is actually a pretty good thing because you get more experience the lower level you are compared to the opponents so right here i pop another ult the ult is going to root each of them they die because of or one of them dies because of that the other one's going to die because i'm slowing him and so we take him out we get that double apoc and then we've got Butcher who has to blink out. Oddly enough, he goes with blink instead of the AoE, but hey. Um, and we take out Butcher as well. And then now that is that should be game right there. Um, I actually did something in this point that I didn't point out. And I need to just double check that really quick. Because I remember there was a couple other things that happened in that play that were interesting. But... Um, but yeah, so we start off this fight with a uh, with an ult. And with that ult starting off, uh, again, what's going to happen is they are going to get stunned from the Hanzo arrow. Then they'll get stunned again from my stuff and from his, but uh, he's going to get rooted, he's going to get rooted, and he's going to get rooted. And suddenly, they're in a position where he needs to get away before the boar hits him. And because he needs to get away before the boar hits him, then he's going to really, really struggle. So if you ever see the enemy team split, this is immediately one of the best ults to do because it's going to force a team fight that they don't want and this is exactly what's happening we're forcing a team fight that they don't want they're all rooted so they can't fight anyone he's stunned um and he he's just ending his route so we just killed off him look at how fast i'm attacking super fast melting that guy down so right here i feign death because the butcher is charging me and i also dodge both of, or one of the apox when I also dodge the um, the the ult, so my bear takes the ult instead. Once that's over, I then can hop out of stasis and I can start fighting him. So overall, I mean, that's why I like feign death, right? And look at that DPS, just just swinging away, my little mini Zuljin going. And that's it, guys. This is why I love this build and why I think that Rexar is so strong on maps like this and maps like Braxis. Um, whether you agree or not that he's uncounterable, uh, that's mainly just something that I pulled from the, the pro scene back when HEC was running, um, because it was just something that, that was, that they just had talked about for a long time. Uh, I do recommend playing and trying out this build. I'll mention the few areas that I do shift this build depending on the game. Uh, I think that this talent aspect of the beast is still so strong that it's hard not to take it. So while you could have the auto attack speed bonus going as long as you want because it lasts for four seconds then you'll be lowering the cooldown to a five second cooldown um you'll have it going almost the entire time then that's cool but you don't need that attack speed if you can stun things more often so if you need the stuns if we don't have all these stuns on our team uh, i probably would have taken aspect of the beast outside of that i usually just take the the rest of these talents that i have feign death i'll sometimes take these other talents but the rest of this build is essentially what i normally go the better you get with rexar the more you'll be uncounterable because you'll be costing the enemy's experience or you'll be holding a point forever. Um, and a lot of times you can do both. If you notice that game, I was keeping up with experience while also holding that uh, that point for the enemy team. I mean, look at the experience contributed. Um, I did really well, and then Azebo was also double soaking. Like, we dominated the experience contributed that game. I mean, they're actually really close for being also down nine kills. So to be fair to Butcher, he actually did this really, really well. So I'll give props to Butcher. Um, but at the same time, like, this is this is really what you can do. I, we took a game that we were losing in the beginning, and we made it to where they never won an objective until eventually we slowly came back, and suddenly we were winning objectives. That's what Rexar does. If you're ahead, you're going to dominate. But if you're behind, you can hold the game over until you start winning, especially on these two maps. So thank you guys so much for watching. Try out Rexar. He's very difficult to play. Um, but if you can try him out on maps like Braxis and Dragonshire, you're going to see that he's a really fun hero. And he can absolutely dominate on these maps. Uh, to, to Again, a lot of pros called him uncounterable.
um, because you you needed to throw an extra person in that lane to deal with him. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to check out my other videos.